I bought this ripoff X106 from Timu for $66 so you don't have to. Let's find out just how terrible it is. So first of all, this thing kind of does look like an X106, but you can tell if you look closely at all that it very much is not. It's entirely, oh, that's <laughs> the cold shoe cover I just knocked right off. Uh, it's entirely made of plastic. It has a cold shoe there. It is not a hot shoe. I really don't think you can fire a flash off this, even though it does have an internal flash, but uh, I've actually taken some pictures using the internal flash and it literally is blocked by the lens itself, leaving the bottom half of your images dark. The focus ring around the lens is of course made of plastic and doesn't do anything. This knob around the power button is plastic and doesn't do anything. The only actual dial that works on here is this one right here and it's not even a PASM dial, it's just a bunch of random settings. It has a very weird and slow user interface and uh, it actually boasts some pretty hefty specs for its $66 price tag. In the obnoxiously long title that Timu had this listed under, it says that it is a vlogging camera capable of 48 megapixel images and 4K video, which I am sincerely doubting for the price point, but we'll find out. As you can see on the front here, it has a 16 times powerful zoom, which I use to photograph the solar eclipse, actually. <laughs> and it looks terrible because it's not an optical zoom, it's a digital zoom on an already amazingly small sensor, like way smaller than the sensor on your phone. So this just produces absolutely terrible images. And from what I can tell, whenever you put it on the 48 megapixel setting, it's just adding a bunch of sharpness and it actually significantly slows down the operating time of this, which is already terrible. So let's just take a quick look at how this works. You press the power button there and you're greeted with a nice little welcome screen, which is nice. I don't see that on most cameras. That's innovative, right? So here in photo mode, if you put it on there, it just says camera and as you can see, uh, you're greeted with a somewhat wide field of view. This is my table. You can see the the lights off to the side whenever I'm lighting a product I have these little tube lights there. It's about a, actually a 24 millimeter equivalent field of view So it actually is capable of like if you're hand holding it getting a somewhat decent image If you were to try to vlog with it, which you probably shouldn't it's really terrible trust me But it has a 24 millimeter equivalent field of view at the widest and then you could digitally zoom in with this magnifying glass It's the same button that you use to zoom in on your pictures whenever you're viewing them back as well You press this button right here to toggle your super awesome flash it actually, you can turn off the beeping in the menu. I just choose to leave it on because it's actually hard to tell if if you actually put an input in the camera because the buttons are so bad. You have to kind of rely on that beeping. And like, let's just dive into the menu here real quick. Let's say I want to change the setting. Press the menu button. Okay, there we go. Let's go over here. I want to change the exposure compensation because there's no exposure compensation dial on this, by the way. You have to go over two and down one, go into EV. Oh, I'm just press the button because it's easy to do that and then you can manually move your EV because right now it's overexposing the table so I'll do EV oh that's plus two. Oh, I messed it up so I have to go back into the menu and go over here oh, I mispressed okay you can see how <laughs> painfully slow this is this makes taking images absolutely terrible and it does have a viewfinder here but the viewfinder is essentially just a little plastic window it's completely blurry around the corners and it doesn't give you an accurate representation of what your photo is going to look like at all because first of all it's off to the side it's not even the same field of view as the lens all the way zoomed out and it doesn't give you any indicators when you zoom in what your frame is going to look like so that's just basically useless you end up having to hold the camera out like this like a smartphone which if you're using a camera nowadays, you're pretty much trying to get away from using a smartphone and this does not do that for you. Here under resolution, you can see we can go all the way up to 48 megapixels and it for some reason goes all the way down to two megapixels, which is probably much closer to the actual native resolution of this sensor. I usually actually leave it on 12 megapixels because that gives me a usable image without slowing down the processing time. When you set it on 48 megapixels, you have to wait like a full five seconds after taking the image to even review it or do anything else and it fills up the card really fast. I won't go into every single mode on this camera but there is a video mode here which we'll take a look at. Okay this is video test one 720p just the internal microphone. I tried my best to make myself not look like a complete ghost but I, no matter what I can't get the exposure down low enough no matter how down. When I turn the light down too low it just turns like the video black and white. It's really look at that. Is, is, is it just me or is the color 
like flashing. For video resolutions, you actually have VGA, which I've never seen in a camera that's modern before, which is 680 by 480 in like kind of a square aspect ratio, kind of the native uh, size of the sensor, I think. You have HD, 720p, full HD, 1080p, 2.7K, and 4K. The camera absolutely cannot handle filming 4K video. I don't even know why it's, a, I, th I know why it's an option in there. It's because it's a marketing thing. But whenever you put 4K on this, it just can't even handle it. It's like super slow shutter speed laggy all the time. It's just terrible. And as I was testing these different video resolutions, I made the mistake of plugging in a Rode Video Micro mic into the mic port. Because by the way, there's a slot here on the side with a mic port, which it does not work. In a mini HDMI, not micro HDMI, like a Fujifilm X-T3, but a mini HDMI, which actually surprisingly does work if you wanna record yourself with this and monitor it, because there's no way to manually adjust your exposure in either photo or video on this. You can only use exposure compensation. You can manually set your ISO, but you can't set an aperture because I'm pretty sure it's just a fixed aperture. This lens is basically a glorified pinhole camera with a plastic sheet in front of it. So you're stuck with that fixed aperture. You're stuck with whatever ISO, either auto, it only goes 100 to 400, but if you set it manually, but even if you set that, the shutter speed is still automatic, which you can't change. So that's a general overview of what the camera can do. And again, all around, it's just terrible. But if you're looking at the photo image quality, which is really what this is gonna be better for, the video just is absolutely terrible. The photos can be somewhat redeeming sometimes if if you're looking for that lo-fi sort of look, but it's, even then it's still not good. It'd be better just to get an actual digi cam from a couple years ago. In the photos, you can expect pretty shoddy auto white balance. So you want to manually set that, which is going to take about 10 minutes of menu diving to go over. It also has super low dynamic range. And just because of how terrible and tiny the sensor is, you somehow get color noise even at ISO 100 in broad daylight. The only redeemable thing about the image quality with this is that it has a pretty impressively close minimum focus distance which I was actually surprised that you could get somewhat of a blurry background if you focus as close as this possibly can. Overall, there's really nothing to say. It's a cheap piece of Chinese plastic garbage. $66 is not going to get you a good camera. I don't know what you expected. If you're still watching, you just wanted to hear me crap on this the whole time, which was kind of fun to do, I would admit. So if you want me to test any other terrible products out, any other terrible cameras or lenses, maybe that would be fun just to see how bad things really can get around here. So leave a like if you enjoyed, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.